you know, there, there are a lot of uh, standards in all these different uh, areas of emergency response, right? We have um, groups that maintain a, a certain uh, quality expectation for the training that you, you, you need to become um, a, a first responder in any given field. What, what's the state of standards in uh, dive first response? Mm. Tim, you want to try that one? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll definitely say there, I have not in my multiple you know, decade career seen any at all. Uh, it's usually rolled up into a regular standardized dive and certification, but there's no breakout. There's no true understanding of dive first responder. Again, this is first responder. That means first aid, basic stuff. It's not like you're going for uh, paramedicine or, or even an EMT tech. This is just stuff that I think everybody that gets on a dive boat needs to have at their fingertips at least um, and have at least some familiarity with it before they get out there. And it could save their life and it could save the lives of their fellow divers out there. Yeah, and, and I would say that when I wrote the book and, tailor, and developed the course, I tailored it around what was then called first responder. Now it's called emergency medical responder, but it was tailored for the diving environment. So we threw in a lot of fundamental first responder information in terms of what you needed to know in an emergency, but then also threw in the information in terms of what you need to know in the diving setting in the event something goes wrong. Um, I think classic thing that we chatted about the other day um, when we were running the chamber in St. Thomas and people were going to fly patients up from wherever down east um, we would have to caution the pilots to fly at wave top level bringing the patient up they didn't understand that if you take a, a dive accident patient up to altitude you're probably going to exacerbate their condition and perhaps kill them, particularly if it's an air gas embolism. Okay. So it's, it's a lot of basic stuff that comes into play when you're dealing with somebody that's been submerged. So that, that kind of begs the question, um, you know, it, 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 if you're on a boat and you're diving, then it'd be great to have someone who's, you know, read this book or, or received the kind of training uh, that you all offer. Um, but if someone gets hurt in a dive uh, environment, then what happens? You know, you, you mentioned uh, this, this like airlift situation, but um, what's the protocol? Uh, I think, uh, you want to try that, Tim, or you want me to jump sure. on it? Sure. The, the basic information that's out there for dive masters or people that are actually supervising diving or should be supervising diving is that they call the divers alert network. Uh, and that's a, a nationwide worldwide actually network of hyperbaric physicians like myself. Um, and then they can put you in contact with the local resources, which is very, very critical. And I highly recommend them. I've, you know, I've been around it very a long time. The thing that uh, what we're looking for is basic stuff that you can do uh, while you're contacting them, and it will save their lives and it'll lessen their uh, their out their bad outcomes. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend them. That's that's probably the first thing that's in every dive course is if you got a problem, you call Dan Divers Alert Network, and then they'll put you in contact with resources. Yeah, okay, absolutely. so so anyone can call Dan, but um, what we're talking about today is really the, the sort of things that you can do between. Um, you know, when an accident happens and when you can actually get to, you know, a facility or when you can get that help that might save someone's life. Right. Well, I think some real simple basics would be keep them laying down. Um, and if you've got oxygen, give them oxygen. Um, but as Tim said, Divers Alert Network is a great resource. They will basically, they will basically coach people through what to do. Typically, they will end up getting the patient referred to a, a recompression chamber somewhere, the nearest one. And well, they know where the chambers are that are active. And that's a big thing is getting to a chamber as soon as possible for evaluation. Um, the other thing is just dangerous marine envenomations. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, things out there that can sting and bite and paralyze. So having a basic familiarity with that, even on a contact photographic uh, level is important. Then there's the treatment. And uh, Doc and I are working on a, a, some, a, an addition or project to try to delineate that better with uh, publication. But that's the beauty of, of having information like that. You can say, oh man, I had this bite 
hit me, what is it? You know, I don't know about that. 